Well, hello. Thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're continuing here on the walls of Dye Stroke London Dye. And as you can see from the sign here, we're just outside St Augustine's Church. And of course, this church here actually survived the siege and it continues to this day as an operating church for worship. Of course, St Augustine's Church, as I say, it's situated actually on the walls here, as you can see. And it stands on the site of an ancient Augustinian abbey, which is dated from the end of the 13th century. And the abbey was used by the planters at the beginning of the 17th century uh, until the completion of the cathedral in 1633. But before we go in, I want to show you a, few, a couple of graves. And there's loads of old graves here in this church. But I'm going to show you one on this side and then one on the other side. And this one is here, left the body of John Robertson, Robertson departed this life March 27th. And as you can see there, it's 1684. So that's incredible. So of course that was before uh, the siege, just a few years before the siege. And then I'm going to show you one on this side as well. And you can see the side of the church there. They're doing a wee bit of renovation work. And you can hear the bells ringing there. I heard somebody saying that somebody must be getting married. <laughs> Now it's this stone here. It's Thomas Gay, or Guy, I think that is. And it says, as you can see there, 1668. So that one is 1668. So that's another old gravestone. And there's a load of old gravestones in this cemetery. And what you're looking at there is, that's the Walker Memorial. And I'm going to take you over there um, shortly. But we're going to do in here first. And so, as I say, it stands, this abbey actually stands on the site of an ancient, <coughs> excuse me, Augustinian abbey which is dated from the end of the 13th century and then as I say the abbey was also used by the planters at the beginning of the 17th century until the completion of the cathedral in 1633 and the church was rebuilt by Bishop I'm going to try and pronounce this Bernard oh, Bernard Bernard about 1768 and it was named the Chapel of Ease now this monument here this actually, this gentleman was executed when he was 26 years of age. And it was an attempt to uh, overthrow uh, King Ferdinand VII, who was on the throne of Spain. And it was found out some Spanish exiles had planned this. And he, was, he put about £5,000 into the venture. And uh, so he was caught and uh, then they insisted on him being uh, executed. And so who, that's, who that memorial there is to. And then there's another memorial here. And this one here is actually 1689. So this, what you're looking at here, folks, is 1689. I don't know if you'll be able to uh, see that. I'll try and zoom in. But you can actually see the, you can't see the 16 so well, but you can certainly see the 89. And it's also got the imprint of the Red Hand of Ulster. And uh, that's the Macomb, that's actually the uh, Macomb Monument. So it is, so fantastic to have this. This was found in the graveyard. So obviously it possibly come off a tomb. And uh, 
the inscription says, to the memory of John McComb, who departed 1689. So great to have that in here, there's no doubt about it. So now we're heading into the main sanctuary of the church. And a beautiful church, there's no doubt about it. There's the rule of honour, which we will have a wee look at. St Augustine's Church, London Dairy for King and Country. And so that's those who fought in the war, in the different wars. So there you are. And I love the balcony. The balcony looks really old, doesn't it? It's fantastic with the wood. And look at the ceiling in this church. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's, it would remind you very much of the Tudor style, wouldn't it? There's no doubt about it. And then it says here, Foundation of the Abbey of St. Columba. You're now standing on the site of St. Columba's first abbey, about 546 AD. So there you are, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? And that's another war memorial there, 1914-1919. So quite amazing. And then this tapestry here, this tapestry was woven by the people. And uh, it actually represents uh, St. Colum um, heading to Iona with the 12 disciples of his. And so that was done by hand by the people. It's very beautiful, isn't it? You can see the lovely window as well, again the ceiling. And that window there, that's of uh, Naomi and Ruth. So it is. So quite amazing, no doubt about it. Look at the balcony. Balcony's fantastic, isn't it? And this memorial here, it used to stand actually in the porch. But uh, it's believed that this is the oldest gravestone in the actual church and in the church grounds. As I say, it used to be in the porch, but now it's here. And it's of Robert Carrick. He was an Elizabethan soldier and he died about 1609. And it says that it can be seen in the porch, but you can't see it anymore in the porch because they've moved it in here. But that's actually where it used to stand. And so that's that. Now, it doesn't mention that in here, but I got that information on Google. But it says that it's worth, it says that the stone in the window case is another carved stone of unknown origin. It was discovered in the graveyard after the present building was erected, and like the Macomb stone, could have been part of a memorial tablet in the old chapel of ease. And the inscriptions, and then it's Richard Carrick, son of Robert Carrick, who is a soldier. And it goes from 1274 right down to the 1600s. And so he, he died in 1609, and so it's believed that he was actually the, old, his is the oldest grave actually uh, here. So there you are. And as I say then, this, this church was rebuilt by Bishop uh, Bernard 
about 1768 and he called it the uh, Chapel of Ease. And this present church saying was consecrated on the 11th of June 1872. And St. St. Augustine's is also known as the Wee Church on the Walls because, of course, it's on the walls of uh, Derry Stroke, Londonderry. And it's thought to be the site of the 6th century uh, monastery. And the site is acknowledged as the oldest Christian site in the city and is one of two locations in the city that claim to be the site of Columba's original monastery. So quite amazing. And as I say, Columba, he, he sailed to Iona.